Hello. Welcome to our podcast on transforming data into information. My name is Sean Mills. I'm the Senior Director for Consulting for our MarkLogic Central Region. And uh, I've been with MarkLogic for a little over six years and been in this industry for entirely too long. Uh, joining me on this podcast is Brian Griffin. Brian is a consultant on, on our team. Brian, why don't, you, why don't you introduce yourself? Thanks, Sean. Uh, like I said, I'm a consultant on the MarkLogic team. Uh, I've been working with MarkLogic for about five years now, um, originally as a customer, uh, and then I uh, moved over to being a consultant with MarkLogic about a year and a half ago. Thanks, Brian. Well, what we want to talk to you about today is the fact that you know data is everywhere, but what you really need is information. Uh, answering the first part of that problem is kind of simple. MarkLogic allows you to consolidate any type of data into a multi-model data hub uh, with the ability to search and discover against your entire corpus of content. Most organizations out there use business intelligence tools such as you know Tableau, Click, Power BI, other you know whatever else you want to you want to use on, on that front. Uh, to help visualize and make sense of your information, but those tools traditionally only work with relational databases, RDBMS is the legacy stuff out there. Uh, so how can you take advantage of that NoSQL data consolidation and still support your business users with their existing toolkits? You know, Brian and I ran into this challenge with one of our clients, uh, and Brian's gonna go into how we addressed it. Brian, why don't you talk a little bit about the, the technical challenge and what we did? Sure, so uh, since MarkLogic version 9, uh, you've been able to uh, define a relational lens on top of your document uh, that ex essentially exposes a tabular view of your document data uh, that can be queried through SQL using ODBC or JDBC, uh, which makes it really easy to connect to your different BI tools, uh, example being Tableau, it works just like any other data source. You create a connection through ODBC to your MarkLogic data source, uh, and you can drag tables into your data source pane, join them together, just like you would any other data source. So that, that sounds pretty straightforward and pretty simple, Brian, but it's, it's not always quite that easy, right? No, no, it's not. Uh, so. When the feature was originally released, uh, we had uh, a view of how we were going to use this uh, specifically with BI tools in mind, where the SQL queries would be performing aggregations for uh, the user uh, from the BI tools. Uh, but we have run into cases where customers want to, say, extract their entire data set from the uh, table view uh, into a Tableau extract or a click view extract or what have you uh, so that they can perform all of their uh, aggregations and um, view creations locally. Um, and we, we've run into problems with uh, just those volumes of data moving through the ODBC driver uh, but we've, we've worked through those. We've updated our server and our driver in order to uh, fetch data in a smaller chunk uh, and just keep asking for more chunks as we get more data. Uh, it allows us to handle essentially any size data set that you can throw at it, storing storing it as it comes in instead of just holding it all in memory and waiting for the full data set to come in. Now, now Brian, I, I think the, the best part of the story, though, kind of comes when you talk about the numbers. So can you, can you characterize, talk about where we started and where we finished after we were able to implement this, uh, this, this kind of tweak to the solution? Sure. So in the customer uh, scenario that we were working in uh, when I first ran into this problem, uh, we were running into limits around uh, 6 million rows of data coming back to uh, the client uh, workstation, which in this case was a, a laptop with about 
16 gigabytes of RAM. Um, but after this update, we got to the point where we were pulling 40 million rows down uh, with really no signs of slowing down. We could have kept going farther. That's just how big the data set was. Uh, no real memory impacts, no big CPU impacts. That's incredible. I, I can't imagine many data sets getting much bigger than that. And, and I, I, I would hazard a guess that we're going to be able to handle it when it happens. Uh, and I think that's one of the greatest things about the, the product and, and the team that we have is, is watching all, you know, watching engineering, working with support, working with our field units uh, to be able to answer the bell for these customer requirements. Um, and the fact that, you know, frankly, you can take it anywhere. You can, you know, this one happened to be on the on-prem implementation. Uh, we are, can run in AWS, we can run in Azure, and then you know, our latest implementations are running on MarkLogic's Data Hub service. Uh, which is a true you know, database as a service running in the running in either either of those AWS or Azure environments. Uh, so so pretty impressive. And and really that answers the question: How do you transform data into information? You can use your existing toolkits to 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 use uh, all you know look at all the reports and look at all of the uh, the, the things that you're used to doing. Uh, and if you have any questions for either of us, just uh, you can contact us directly. Um, again, I'm Sean, Brian is with me, and thank you for your time and attention.